welcome to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. Hear and learn through the success of others how to build the life and business you deserve. Learn to overcome failure, what it means to seek out growth, and how to become the best possible version of yourself. And now, here's your host, coach, entrepreneur, husband and father, and author of the number one best-selling book, Survive, Scale, Soar, Jeremy Williams. All right, and welcome back to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy. And just a quick reminder, this show comes in two formats, Real Talk, where it's just me and the mic sharing what's happening in the world and how it can impact your business. And then Success Talks, where I have the honor and the opportunity to speak with leaders in their respected industry, and they share with you what's made them successful and maybe even some of the challenges along the way being a small business owner. And today I have a a great friend that's on, Dr. Tyler Hamill of Hamill Chiropractic and Wellness right here in my hometown of Kingwood, Texas. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, Dr. Hamill, I'm glad to have you on the show. And this doesn't get talked a lot uh, when we're talking about small business. We talk generally about what needs to happen within the business, but we don't talk about us as a person in the business. So this is going to be a great conversation today because your your expertise on health so the first question is, why do you think business owners do not pay attention to their health? All right, that's a that's a good question. So I I think you know as a, as a business owner myself, I've been doing it for twenty three years, and I just have a front desk person in me. So when you when you get into the uh, you know the the details of the business, for me being a chiropractor, there's much more than just being a chiropractor to running the business. So it's very easy to get caught up um, and, to, and to say maybe like, you know, addicted to, to, to some degree in, in the business because it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of work. And I think for a lot of small business owners, um, it's it's the same. So when you're when you're always putting so much time and effort into the business, then most likely you're going to neglect some of the other things. And and it's always a, um, it's always a challenge, you know, for. When you think of uh, your family and the hobbies and your health, just like any other business. Um, and some I, I heard a long time ago, which is kind of a crazy quote, but somebody was telling me it's great to be in, like owning your own business. You uh, you can work whenever you want. You can decide which 18 hours of the day you want to work, you know, which is which, which for some of us. I mean, that can that can kind of be a reality. So I always I kind of go back to the. You, know, you hear kind of the the health as wealth and and that kind of thing too. But if you're if you're neglecting your health, you're not able to um, you know to give the energy say to your clients or the service that you would like to give to your clients because you know if you don't have the energy or if you have brain fog all the time or different things like that, it's 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 hard to do. So you know I'm a little biased because I'm in I'm in that field and I, I you know I live what I recommend. Um, and I just know for me, if I, you know, if I wasn't sleeping well and not eating well and exercising, it'd be hard for me to give the energy to each one of my patients when they come in, right? It'd be almost unfair to them if they come in and I'm, I'm tired, you know, and I have nothing to give. Like it's, so I, I always think of it on, on that side of it. Um, so it's a, it's a priority, but you know, you still, still have to balance it all out, right? You can't just do everything health and neglect, uh, uh, the other aspects of your life. So, yeah, I, th- I think you hit on a lot of things there. And, and sometimes I, th- I think it is almost like an addiction, you know, small business owners, we always want to make sure that our clients are taken care of and they get the greatest service. And then we look up and like you said, 18 hours have passed or even 14 hours have passed. And you're like, okay, the last thing I want to do now is to take myself to the gym or, you know, go ride my Peloton in the bedroom or go for a walk. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm tired and I'm, and I'm done. And a lot of that tiredness and being done comes from not being healthy. You know, I've had, I've dealt with that over the years. And so what, what could small business owners do to ensure that it becomes part of the routine or part of their day uh, when it yeah. comes to, to their health? So I, I think just, just as you would treat your business, you know, if you are, meeting with clients or networking, anything like that, you just, you have to schedule that into your day, right? So you hear that a lot. If you don't put it into your schedule, it doesn't get done. So you, so you have to do that with, 
with your health and whether that be, you know, taking enough time in the morning to prepare food for breakfast or for lunch or take enough time at lunchtime or in the morning to do a, a little exercise routine or go for a run or something like that. Um, you got, you have to get it scheduled. And, and I think a lot of that stuff is just, it's easier to do in the morning because a lot of stuff hasn't happened yet, right? You don't have all the new calls or new things or stuff that comes up. When I get to the office, you never know. I mean, we could be, we could just have a couple of patients on the book in the morning and all of a sudden it's just going crazy. And, you know, again, I want to serve as many people as I can. So there might be a tendency to neglect that other stuff. So I, I would recommend doing it in the morning if you can, you know, waking up a little bit early, getting the stuff done you need to do. Uh, and after you do it for a while, then it becomes a routine and a habit. And it just like anything else, it, it gets easier and easier, right? So, you know, you focus on, you go to bed at the same time every night, wake up at the same time in the morning, do your routine. And, um, and that way you, you know, you don't have to think too much about it. I think it's, it's easy to overthink, right? I wake up in the morning, well, what am I going to make for breakfast or what kind of workout am I going to do? Like if, if you just kind of have it already figured out and you don't have to think about it, you just wake up and you do it and it becomes easy, easy over time. So that, that's what I recommend. I know there's people with families and kids. It's not always easy, maybe in the morning, but I just know for me, like after the day gets going, lunch is much more difficult. After work is much more difficult because so many things can happen uh, in that span of the day. Yeah. With a lot of small business owners, I talk about, you know, getting stuff done, the most important stuff done in the morning because the fire might, the afternoon might be using the fire extinguisher and going, putting all the little fires out. And um, so let's talk about mindset around that because it sounds really easy. Okay. I just blocked some time. I'm going to go work out. I'm going to, I'm going to contribute that time to getting, getting healthier. Yet there's that, there might be that mindset, especially if you're getting started, like, uh, Dr. Dr. Hamill's going to hurt. I, I'm tired. <laughs> I don't want to be sore. Like, how do you push through that type, those type of thoughts? Yeah. So that's a, it, it's a good point. I mean, I think especially when it comes to come anything, but health, especially it's um, you're going to go through some kind of like peaks and valleys, of course, when, when you start it, it's, if it was super easy, then everybody would be doing it. Right. And it, it'd be that easy, but I'd say, you know, like kind of starting off in that kind of that mindset or that positive mindset in the morning, it really helps. So you can kind of figure out like where you're going to start in the day, right? Like early in the morning you get up and it's like, well, I'm, I'm going to make my coffee. I'm going to read or meditate. I'm going to do my exercises. And I think if, from the get go in the morning, if you, if you have that mindset, like, let me, let me um, get aligned with the goals that I'm doing. Right. So, all right, I want to be healthy today. So you can see how, you know, making breakfast in the morning, exercising, meditating, that kind of stuff, you're, you're kind of staying in alignment with those goals. Right. And the, the biggest factor I think is, you know, if you can stay in alignment with those goals for the whole day, that's fantastic. But the amount of distractions that try to come into play are many. Right. So it could be stuff at work. It could be like social media for sure. Um, you know, playing online, whatever. It's like you you have to, as hard as that could be, you have to uh, kind of stay aligned with your goals or your target and just don't get involved in that stuff, right? Like all of us could be way more productive if we didn't, say, waste uh, time on distractions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's yeah. I can't find the time in the day, but I've been on Facebook for four hours, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I, um, I understand it's like, you know, it's just so much in our face now with social media and stuff that it, you know, the, the only way to, to not get distracted is to not go on. Otherwise, you know, you go on, you, you open up a website browser and go down the rabbit hole, you know? Yeah. They spend four hours watching videos on how to get healthy yet. All they, all they could have, they could have gone out for a walk or something. Yes. Right. Totally agree. Yeah. How, how do you, so, you know, that, that there's that part of mindset where they're, it's like they know it's going to be hard. It's going to be a challenge. Uh, I think there's also a mindset issue around I've got to go in there and do it all. Like I got to go to the gym and hit it hard today, like back in the day of high school, you know, and yep. you might not be in shape for that. Like what what should somebody do as they're they're getting back into a routine? Where should they start? 
So I, I would say, um, you know, kind of for, first and foremost, too, I, I think a lot of people get to the point where they say, wow, like I really need to do something about my health, you know, because I'm feeling this way or maybe I gain weight or I have this condition or a diagnosis. Um, so you always want to keep in mind, like, you know, why you're doing it in the first place. If it's just if you just say, I want to exercise so I can like I can look better like, is that enough to keep you going? Or I just want to exercise because my, you know, my friend's doing it and he looks real, or, you know, st stuff like that. It's usually not enough to keep you going. So I think it's always important to remember um, a couple things. So one, again, like, you know, why you're doing it. Like, if I keep doing this, then, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to feel better, feel healthier, and I'll be able to do whatever, go on vacation. I'll be healthy enough to play with my kids or, you know, kind of, larger life um, stuff that's going on that you can relate to. Second, I think and probably equally as important is like, we do see a lot of quick fix things today, but probably more so than ever, right? And media ads. Um, so kind of faith in the process, you know, you, you kind of hear that, like you, you never want to go into something with a quick fix mentality because you'll be disappointed every time. But instead, if you go in and think like, yeah, this is going to be challenging, you know, faith in the process. So let's, you know, you can journal, you can do different things like that. Like, how am I feeling after a week, a two weeks, three weeks, two months, right? Um, that's a that's a good way to plan it out because if, and if you just keep that in mind, you know, nothing, nothing uh, tough comes easy, you know, or like you're changing health habits. It's, it's, it's never easy. And if, if you're falling for those easy quick fix this and quick fix that. Like it's I always, I always tell patients like you fall for one and then you go on to the next one and you fail again and fail again. So yeah, I think from the get go, just, just uh, get that quick fix mentality out of your, out of your mindset. So this is all great stuff. You know, I, I think, and, and you know, this is that exercise is just one component. Diet is probably the biggest component. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. And, and I'd say, um, exactly. And, you know, just, just mentioned one other quick thing too, like probably one of the, the, the least, uh, considered important things for people is rest and recovery, right? The, the sleep. And you think business owners, like we're go, 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 go. We're working hard. And even if we're exercising, spending time with their family and it's like, well, yeah, what about the sleep and the recovery? Right. If, and a lot of people aren't getting, uh, enough of that. So they're waking up in the morning, super caffeine, energy drinks, all that kind of stuff. So that that's very important too. On on the diet side, you know, it's, and I, I think by now, I mean, of course, there's still the, you know, the quick fix pills and the this and the that, but we all know what's, you know, what's good for us and what isn't good for us. You know, there isn't like, they're not going to come up with a sugar that we could eat all the time. That's all of a sudden like going to be good for us, you know, and not affect our blood sugar. There's, there just isn't that. They might, they might try, but it's never going to happen. So I always tell patients that, you know, when you, when you talk about the food or you, you shouldn't even use the word diet because that can bring about like some emotional you know overwhelming things. But if you just stick to the, the eating real food side of it, I think that's probably the, um, the least overwhelming thing, right? Because people know what real food is. You go to the grocery store you eat meat, chicken, or fish, or vegetables, or fruit, like, that's all real. Um, stuff that's in, a like, a bag, a box, or a can, right? It's processed, not so real, right? So I think a, a lot of stuff would be fixed to some degree just, just by doing that, right? Like, blood sugar is an issue, a lot of processed foods, things like that that we eat, it, affect, it affects blood sugar. But if you're eating meat and chicken and fish and salads and fruit, like, you're probably going to be pretty good with blood sugar. So I would say with, you know, with, with, with diet, like just, just focus on, on that. If you eat real food, just try to do it for a month and then reevaluate and see how you're feeling. Um, the other side of it is supplements. I, I take a lot of supplements too, because it's just hard to get everything that you need in the diet. Even if you're eating healthy, even if you're eating organic, it's just hard to get all the, all the nutrients you need. So there's just some basic things that, um, you know, that you can take to just to make sure you're getting enough nutrients for your, you know, your cardiovascular system, your immune system, 
just simple things. You don't, you don't have to go, um, you don't have to go overboard, but I think if you're eating the right stuff and you're taking the right supplements, you'll see changes for sure. And I think the big thing, energy, and then your kind of your brain clarity, right? A lot of people wake up, they're tired as can be, they're doing caffeine, they're, they have a brain fog. And that's like, that's a tough way to start the day. And if you're a business owner, that's a tough way to try to run a business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think about, I, I've heard it said that if you're not shopping on the outside of a grocery store, uh, anytime you're going down an aisle, you're, you're going to start moving yourself towards some problems, uh, but to, to eat that, the right food, but even some of the right food is so depleted of, of nutrients because of the processing and the way that it's grown. Um, I've also heard that it is important to make sure you're getting some of those key supplements that, that do impact a lot of the things that are taking place in your body. Tell me about chiropractic health. So you're, you're in the chiropractic field. Um, what, what does that do for somebody that's looking to improve health? Yeah. So chiropractic, basically you're, you're looking at um, kind of in a nutshell, think of spine and, and nervous system, right? Like your spine protects your spinal cord, your nervous system. So when we look at the spine and a lot of people today work on computers, there's lots of postural stress like that, that affects the spine and that affects a bunch of different health issues. So I'd say with, with chiropractic, what you're trying to do is uh, remove the stress from the spine and think of it that way, right? Removing stress from the spine, not only can that help in say neck pain, back pain, or headaches, but also you think of, it's kind of like a, like a reboot for the nervous system in a way, right? Because you have the, the spines protecting all that kind of stuff. And if it's, if it's the spines, if it's misaligned, if there's extra pressure in there and putting pressure on nerves, it, it could realistically, it could affect different things uh, in the body organs, glands, digestion, different things like that. So, but for chiropractic, most people, like they come in in the first place because of neck and back pain, but they might also have some issues with digestion or sleep or energy. And sometimes adjustments and getting everything uh, realigned can make a difference in that too. Um, I wouldn't say like people aren't lined up coming in here because they're, they have chronic fatigue. There's more to it than that, but just releasing pressure on the nervous system can uh, in a way, kind of feel like a, a reboot for like a computer, you know, and a lot of people will say that it's like, wow, uh, you know, I didn't, didn't realize I was so tight or I had so much pressure, um, you know, adjustments for like blood flow, nerve flow, if that doesn't happen properly in the body, then you're going to have a lot of, uh, issues as well. So I think that's a, it's a good way to look at chiropractic. Um, more and more people, these like probably 80% of our people coming in, they're working on a computer almost a no matter what profession they're in, you know, it's like, uh, that's such a common thing. And, and I hear, um, some patients, you know, it's six hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. And some of these jobs are like really stressful at the same time. So you have, you know, the postural stress that's getting you, but also the, the emotional stress. And that's kind of, that's a recipe for problems, pressure, spinal headaches, neck pain, things like that. So I think that's the, you know, the biggest thing chiropractic can help with just, just kind of improving posture and removing stress from the, the spine. And when you look at all those aches and pains, it can make a pretty big difference in that. And, you know, there's, there's no medicine, no surgeries, anything like that. It's just naturally kind of like putting your spine or your body back in alignment. And, uh, then your body knows what to do after that. Yeah. And I know, I know personally, I've been in your office for the times when I couldn't hardly even walk. Um, and, and I've been in for times of maintenance and in the time, the one time I know that I came in there and I couldn't even barely get out of the car. I was able to, after that session to walk, get in my car and have no pain. And so, you know, I didn't have to get a surgery. I didn't have to take a drug. I didn't have to do anything other than just get a proper adjustment. And, you know, so I, I think that for somebody that's looking for that alternative, to where they don't have to go do some of those more extreme things, because then you got to think if it's surgery, then you got rehab and, you know, are taking pills, you know, what does that do to your body over time? Yep. Um, exactly. It was, it was a night and day difference just in a matter of a few minutes and in a few adjustments. And so I think it's something that if you're listening to this today and maybe you've thought, I don't know about that, that chiropractor type stuff. I, I just, I don't know if I would do it. 
I was the same way. My, my wife goes all the time. And she was like, you just need to go, go try it, see what happens. And I was, I was sold. It, it made a huge difference in my life. And so uh, I want you to tell us a little bit about your business here in Kingwood, Texas. Like how can people connect with you? What are the different services that you offer um, there yeah. at Hamill Chiropractic and Wellness? So let me, and then let, let me say to just on, on that side of it, like trying chiropractic, like it, you're right because, and there is, as a chiropractor doing it for 23 years, there is a time and place for surgery and for medicine, no question. But, but I think when you look at it, it was, it's never supposed to happen as much as it does now where you have people taking Advil or ibuprofen for 20 years, right? I think when initially when it came out, like, yeah, take it for four to six weeks, things get better and you're done. And I think a lot of medicine is like that. It's never meant to be taken more than for a short period of time. Um, you know, they say kind of like how it is like acute care for a chronic type of conditions, you know, or like arthritis, all this other kind of stuff. Like we're just, we're not meant to take it for, for that long. So, so yeah, I, um, I think it's a great alternative for that. And maybe if people are out there and they've had aches and pains and they've tried all that other stuff and it hasn't worked, there's no, there's no harm in trying chiropractic. Um, it's just, you know, we don't use any medicine or or pain shots or anything like that. It's just the body's natural ability to heal itself. Um, so yeah, and on that end is I've been a chiropractor for 23 years. Um, my office is it's located right across from Kingwood Middle School. Which works out good because my stepson goes there, so it's very very convenient. But our our services, so you know, again, for 80 percent of people coming in neck and back pain, and then we also see headaches and sciatica, shoulder pain, things like that. Um, so chiropractic services, adjustments, we offer corrective exercises, like every patient will get, uh, a recommended amount of, uh, corrective exercises because, and just depends on, on where you go, but I think adjustments and realignment, it's a key thing, but if you can help it, uh, stay that way or stay stable that way, it doesn't last for very long. So for people who come in, who have postural issues and aches and pains, the adjustments help, but if they uh, you know, practice on a daily basis their corrective exercises, those patients get way better. They come in less frequently, uh, guaranteed, you know, so it's a chiropractic, it's a, it's a participation type of treatment for the patient. It's not a come in, get adjustment, and then, all right, you're fixed kind of thing. It's more on the, more on the medicine side, right? Hey, just take this pill and uh, don't change anything else. Just take the pill. And that doesn't work too well. So, so yeah, so that that's on the chiropractic side. We just started doing um, about two months ago. So it's stem wave therapy or called shock wave therapy. There's, it's been around for a long time, uh, but they've come out with a device that, that we can use, um, especially for real, like really tough cases. And when we look at more on the extremity side, so shoulder rotator cuff, frozen shoulder, knee pain, Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis. So I've been able to see those type of patients over the years, but some of those patients, it can take forever to try to get results, like literally forever. And you can look at something like frozen shoulder. It doesn't matter who you go. They, they don't have a good answer for that, you know, whether it's medicine or chiropractic or anything. But this, the stem wave or shock wave therapy, it helps to uh, relieve inflammation and improve circulation and kind of like, Nothing that I could do with my hands compared to this machine. So, so that's the newest thing. And um, it's exciting for me. I always think, well, how can we get a patient, you know, better, faster? Um, and this allows us to, to do that. They still do the corrective exercises and whatnot, but this is kind of a newer, um, uh, you know, latest technology type of uh, machine that's, that's available. And, you know, we're one of the first in the, in the area to, to have it. So I think that's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So how do they, how do they contact you? We know where you're located. What's the best way to set an appointment? So there's a couple different ways. Um, you know, some people still like to use the phone and, uh, and call. <laughs> so our, uh, our office number 281-360-8387. But if you're like a lot of the younger people today, they just want to message and text, and you can live message that same exact number, the 281-360-8387. Uh, 
and everything can, it's a live message uh, interaction with uh, Melissa, my front desk. So you can do it that way and you never have to pick up the phone. You can make an appointment, you can send in your insurance card, you can do all that stuff, um, you know, from home or from work, if you just want to, you know, text on your phone. Uh, Facebook, we have a Facebook group, we have an Instagram um, page, but Facebook, Facebook Messenger for Hamill Chiropractic, you can do the same, you can send a message, it comes in live messages us. Um, so that, that's probably the, the easiest way. On our website, we have a form you can fill out. It's another way to do it. You, you, um, and we'll reach out to you. You put in your name and your phone number, and we'll reach out to you and try to help. But th those are the main ways. Um, we accept walk-ins at our office too. It doesn't happen that often, uh, but it's it's available and it's, you know, we we uh, take a break for lunch. So if you're gonna walk in, you just gotta make sure that, you know, you don't come during lunchtime. But yeah, those are probably the the easiest ways to um, to reach out to us, either a phone call or you can send us a message, and uh, we we get back to you like live messaging. Obviously, we're we're doing that uh, uh, real time. So yeah, so that's about it. Well, that's great. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking the time today, Doctor Hamill, to share uh, you know something that's not really talked about amongst business owners. We always want to know how how do we build the business. Part of it is we've got to be healthier. And I, I too believe and advocate health is wealth. And I appreciate you sharing some of that information. I know there's going to be some people on here that listen to this today and maybe they're having some of those issues or maybe they're ready to make a change. And I, I think you will have inspired a few people with what you've shared today. And, and if, if you do need chiropractic assistance, I highly recommend Dr. Hamill. I personally use him. And uh, he's he's done some amazing, miraculous things that I, I don't understand at all. I just know if I can get back up off the table and walk out and not have any pain, that's pretty amazing. Fantastic. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the testimony. I appreciate you. Appreciate you coming in and, and having me on the podcast. All right. Well, thank you. Until next time, onward and upward. Thank you for listening to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. If you heard something that made a difference in your life today, share it with someone that might benefit and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Learn more about the host of this podcast and coaching services offered by Red Hawk Coaching by visiting www.redhawkcoaching.com.